scripture here uh, introduces us to a man by the name of Saul. Saul was what you might call a Benjamite because he came from the tribe of Benjamin. His daddy was named Kish. When you look at Saul, the Bible reveals that he was a healthy, good-looking, and tall young man. We meet him at a time when he is looking for his father's donkey donkeys have gotten lost and his daddy told him to get a servant and go and search for those donkeys. As grown as Saul was, scripture reveals that he obeyed his father. Scripture, this ninth chapter of 1 Samuel tells us that he did all he could in an effort to find those donkeys. Saul didn't think that because he was grown that he didn't have to do what his daddy said. Saul understood that no matter how old you get, you still have to obey your parents. The Bible didn't say honor your father and your mother till you get grown. But as long as you live, we should honor and obey their commands. He went looking for those donkeys like his father told him. And as a result of looking for these donkeys, the text lets us know that he ended up anointed and appointed king over Israel. My brothers and my sisters, this man was made king. From looking for donkeys, he came in contact with the prophet Samuel who anointed him to become Israel's king. It's obvious that God put this all in action. God fixed it that it would happen this way. This man got to where God wanted him and he was made king over Israel. Listen, it means everything to get to where God wants you to be. In every aspect of our lives, it's important, it's imperative for us to be where God wants us to be. We need to be where he wants us geographically. The Bible lets us know that he appoints the bounds of our habitation. It's important to be in the right place. Uh, geographically, uh, in the right location matters. If Elijah had not gone where God told him, he would have missed out on ravens feeding him twice a day. Am I right about it? It means everything to be in the right place. We need to be where God wants us to be physically. My brothers and sisters, it's important that we do the things that we need to do so that we can stay physically fit and able. Are y'all listening to me? That means sometimes we have to change some of the stuff that we eat. Y'all have to excuse me for a moment because I have to digest that one myself. Sometimes we have to change some of the stuff we eat. Because to be honest with you, us preachers love fried chicken. We like fried stuff. And, 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 but, 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 but it will help us if we change some things. We need to be where God wants us to be physically. We need to be where he wants us to be emotionally. Am I right about it? Sometimes if you don't watch it, your emotions will get all out of whack. Am I right about it? 
us. Sometimes we can't listen good because our emotions are everywhere. We can't act right because our emotions are out of control. It means everything to get to where God wants us to be emotionally. Even mentally, the devil wants to mess up our minds. He want to mess up your head. The devil would love to get all in your head and, and, and mess up your mind. The Bible says God will keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace. Uh, Isaiah said that he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. See, whenever you leave God out of your mind, it'll mess up your mind. We need to be where he wants us to be mentally. We need to be where he wants us to be intellectually. Am I right about it? Yes, don't just settle for that or do. Uh, we need to make ourselves available to be the best intellectually that we can become. Yes, we need to be where he wants us to be socially. Am I right about it? We need to be where he wants us to be morally. And, of course, we need to be where he wants us to be spiritually. Church, it means everything in every aspect of our lives to be where God wants us to be. Yes, listen, my brothers and sisters, the reason why this is so important because things will come up in your life that you can't fix on your own. Problems will arise in your life that you don't have the power to solve by yourself. Yes, it's important to be where God wants you to be because God will give us some help. One of the things I noticed about Saul, not only was he anointed Israel's first king, but he was also informed that the donkeys had already been found. Yes, it's something about being where God wants you to be that will enable you to see God working things out for you. Yes, this, this, this experience of Saul was not a part of his plan. It wasn't his plan. He didn't have it in his goal to become a king. But God made it happen. And you can't always figure out what God has in store for you. You can't always plan and determine what's going to happen in your life. God has the final say so. God has already put in place events and experiences for you and I that we have yet to discover. Come on, Am I right about it? Yes. yes, this was not a part of Saul's plan, but yet God brought it to pass. And listen, God got some good things in store for you. God got some doors that are waiting for you to get to so that he can open them. God, my brothers and sisters, have already worked out some stuff that you have yet to discover. All he's waiting on is for us to get where he wants us to be. Are you listening to me? Jericho, in Joshua's day, Jericho was already defeated. The walls would fall. Israel would get it. But they didn't know it until they got there. Are you listening to me? See, Jericho, it was already there. But they didn't find out until they got to where God wanted them to be. Are y'all with me here? Everything you need, God has already worked it out. He's just waiting for you to get there. That money that Peter needed to pay the temple tax for Jesus, the money was already in the fish's mouth. He was just waiting for Peter to come down and cast his hook and catch the fish. Are you listening to me? The question comes, when did God put the money in the fish's mouth? I don't know. But 
But one thing I do know, when Peter got that, it was already there. This being king was already ready for some. God just helped him to get to where he needed to be. Now notice, his being king, he didn't get there on his own. No. Saul could not say, it's because of me that I became Israel's first king. No. God fixed it. And God used some other sources to help this man to get to where he could be king. Just to mention some of the things. God used donkeys getting lost. He used Saul's daddy to tell him, go look for my donkey. He used the servant that Saul took with him. It was the servant said, hey, look, there is a preacher we can go see and he can help us to find these donkeys. God used some young women who were going to draw water to help him to know where the prophet was. And God used Samuel to anoint Saul to be king. He didn't get that by himself. And guess what? You and I didn't get to where we are by ourselves. These folks don't know what they're talking about. Talking about, I pull myself up by my own bootstrap. If you look at the boot, you didn't make the boot. You got the boot from somebody else. Are y'all listening to me? You can't take the credit for you being where you are. God put some people in your life who helped you along the way. Amen. Somebody helped you. You didn't get there on your own. You didn't get there by yourself. Somebody might be saying, well, you know, my mama never did do anything for me. Wait a minute. You wouldn't have got here had it not been for your mama. What you mean she didn't do nothing for you? But God ain't never done nothing for me. You alive. The only reason why you got life in you is because God put it there. You didn't get here by yourself. You didn't come through what you came through by yourself. Somebody had to help you. Everything you know, everything you learn, somebody had to help you. God uses problems sometimes to get us the way he wants us to be. Am I right about it? God sometimes uses misfortunes to help us to get the way he wants us to be. Uh, he allowed Job to have some misfortunes, but it helped him to get to where God wanted him to be. God sometimes uses dead ends to get us to where he wants us to be. Israel had come to a dead end at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army was behind him, had rocks on the right and rocks on the left. They had reached the dead end. But when you come to a dead end, look up and God will step in. And when God stepped in, he got him across the sea and when the Egyptians tried to follow, they didn't make it. Are you listening to me? Yes. God will even use folk who can't stand you to help you to get to where he wants you to be. He'll use your haters to help you to get to where he wants you to be. That's why you don't need to be losing no sleep over your haters. Don't be tripping over folk who can't stand you. God will use those very folk to help you to get to where God wants you to be. If Joseph would testify, Joseph would tell you sometime he'll use your own family member. I had some brothers who couldn't stand. They hated me. They got sick of me talking about my dreams. They couldn't stand to see me wear that coat of many colors daddy gave me. And they stripped me of my coat, threw me a hole, and sold me. But all oh, God was in it. And God made me a ruler in Egypt. And the very folk 
who mistreated me had to come bow before me. God will use your enemy. He'll use folk who don't like you to help you to get to where he wants you to be. Yes. God will use the church to help you to get to where he wants you to be. That's why Jesus said on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you listening to me? Yes, my brothers and sisters, God uses people to help us to get to where we need to be. Well, I noticed, my brothers and sisters, that that's what God did for Saul. Yes, what looked like a setback was a setup. God will take your setbacks and use them for setups. He'll set you up for a blessing. God will take your disappointment and make it an appointment. Are you listening to me? God will use a breakdown to give you a breakthrough. Yes, my brothers and sisters, God got ways of getting us where he wants us to be. As I look at Saul, I'm glad he didn't give up. He didn't give up saying, well, I'm tired of looking for these donkeys. No, he hung on in there. And if you're going to get to where God wants you to be, you can't be a quitter. You got to hang on in there. You got to be determined to keep moving forward. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, the Bible says, let us not be with in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we don't quit. Yes. Now, what got me, Brother Johnson, was Saul was not a spiritual man. But yet he was determined. He didn't quit. He didn't know God. But yet he was determined. And God still made him king. Here we are. Talking about I will trust in the Lord. As soon as something go wrong, we want to quit. Now if a man who don't know God can hang on in there, why can't we who say we know God hang on in there? He was determined. Yes, God want us where we can grow. He want us where we can glow. And he want us where we can go in Jesus' name. Am I right about it? Well, I'm almost through, but I need to tell you, I thank God for these young women. That's where I want to focus for a moment. These young women who were instrumental in helping Saul to get to where he needed to be. Are you listening to me? Because the text said they saw these young women and they asked them, said, do y'all know what the seer is? The seer was a, was a name that they used to call him before he became a prophet. They would call him a seer because a seer was one who could see what was going to happen before it happened. And so it was, they were talking about the prophet Samuel. And they asked them, they asked these young women, have y'all seen the man of God, the seer? Say, yeah, well, he's, he's, he's in town. Just go on in the town. You'll see him. You need to hurry up and get there because he's getting ready to offer up the sacrifice. And he's going to eat with the people that he's invited. You need to hurry up, go on now if, if you're going to catch him. And they, they're not going to eat until he get there because he's going to bless the food. But if you hurry up, you won't miss it. They were instrumental in helping Saul to come in contact with Samuel. And when he came in contact with Samuel, he was made king. I thank God for these women. God puts people in place to help folk to get to where they need to be. As I look at these women, my brothers and my sisters, they helped me. Yes, they helped me. As I look at Saul and how he reacted, this teaches me you got to be a people person. 
if you're going to get to where God wants you to be, you got to be a people piece. You got you to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to treat people. I'm almost through. Are y'all still with me? You can't dog folk out, talk any way to folk, and then talking about God going to make a way. Are y'all listening to me? You got to know how to get along with people. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to treat people right. Yes, you got to be a people person. If you're going to ever get to where God wants you to be in every aspect of your life, you must be a people person. Now, if you don't like people, are you listening to me? You will never get to where God wants you to be. You got to be a lover of people. Not only that, you got to get pride out the way. Now Saul, Saul didn't say when he saw those women uh, servants say, "Let's ask these women." He, he didn't say, "Oh no, that's what I figured out myself." You know, sometimes our pride gets the best of us. You know, some of us sometimes think we got we got more sense than everybody else, and can't nobody tell us, "No, I figured out." You know, especially us men. I, 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 I figured out. You know what I'm saying? Humble yourself. If you don't know, you don't know. The worst thing you can do is act like you know when you don't. Are y'all listening to me? One of the most embarrassing things sometimes is see somebody grab a mic to lead a song in a church who don't know all the songs. And you're going to get up there and grab it anyway. And then going to act like you done got happy when you done forgot. Are y'all listening to me? It's embarrassing. If you don't know it, you just don't know. I wish I had a praying church. This man, he didn't act like he had all the sense. Let somebody help you. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. yeah, but not only that, but he stayed focused. Yeah. He stayed focused. When he saw these women, he said, whoo. <laughs> he didn't forget about what he came there for. Are y'all listening? He didn't get distracted. I'm trying to help somebody. You got to stay focused. Yeah, yeah you got to stick to the business. Are y'all listening to me? Some of us can't ever get to where we supposed to be in God because we get distracted. The first dress tail come along. There they go. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. You understand what I'm saying? At some point, you got to quit trying to be a player. Say, mama. Woo. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. The Lord doeth all things well. Understand what I'm saying? You got to stay focused. And sisters need to know every time a man says something to you, he ain't flirting. Some of these women think they all that in a bag of chips and every time a man say good morning, he up to something. Every man ain't out to get something. Some of us are just nice. Some of us know how to be polite. Mama taught us always be kind, know how to treat women. Not only that, he was a good listener. They paid attention to what these women had to say. Yes. They listened and they followed instructions. Yes. I like these women because these women were helpful. Yes. They were helpful because notice what the text said. They were on their way to get water. Yes. When they helped Saul and this man, yes. they were on their way to get water. They were not sitting at the house waiting on a check. They weren't sitting up there watching the story. Yeah. On the phone or out on the porch, waiting on a check. They had a job. Yes, yeah. Oh. Yeah. A good job ain't gonna kill you. Yeah. Now y'all say, well, why are you doing that? I, you know, I spend most of my time talking about the men on the work. But that don't mean for the women to sit down and be lazy. 
I mean, ain't it just fair? Don't the gospel address both male and female? The text said they went to draw water. I read it in the verse. In my Bible, it's in mine. Is it in yours? They went to draw water. That's where. They had a job. They were doing something. They were, they were busy. They were industrious. They were going to get one of life's essential water. Everybody need water. You got to have water. And listen, don't take your job lightly. Where you work, God may use that. Not only to help you pay your bills, but to help somebody get to where God wants them to be. Notice they were not in a church house. And listen, you don't have to be in the church house all the time to help somebody to go in the right direction. Yeah, you see, when it comes to witnessing for Christ, you can't be ashamed of it no matter where you are. You ought not be ashamed to tell somebody, look, when I was burdened, I turned it over to Jesus. And the same one that helped me is able to see you through. Yeah. But then notice how, how effectively they instructed them. They told him, let me read the verse. Notice what they said. They said, uh, yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he's right ahead of you. If you hurry up now, uh, you catch him. He, he just came today to the city. And uh, there's going to be a sacrifice of the people. The day at the high place. And as soon as you come into the city, you go straight away and find him. And you'll find him there. They're getting ready to eat. And don't worry, they ain't going to eat till he gets there. So if you hurry up, you can catch him. You can catch him. If you hurry up, don't, don't, don't fool around. You'll catch him. If you follow my instructions, you'll catch him. Notice how much they knew about what was going to happen. They knew the order of the service. Now, if you are a member, a first missionary Baptist church on 14 Scarborough Road and you don't have know what goes on here something is wrong if somebody asks you what time is prayer meeting well I don't know I got a call I, let me find my bullet if you don't know what the preacher been teaching about in Bible study. Oh, y'all listening to me. If you don't know some of the sermons that Rev preached last month, you're not in touch. Y'all ain't listening to me. If you've been watching Designated Survivor, you know what happened on every episode so far. If you've been watching Scandal, You know what's been happening. You've been keeping up with the NBA playoffs. You know where the standings are. But isn't that something you remember God's church? And don't know half about the meetings? And then more than that, if somebody came to you and asked you, what do I need to do to get saved? What can you tell them? Don't just tell them, well, go to Fred Baptist. <laughs> well, some there, a lot of folk come to Fred Baptist and still leave saved, still leave unsaved, still leave lost. You need to know what the scripture says to tell them how to get saved. Tell them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says we all have sinned. All of us are sinners, but Jesus is our savior. Then they said, hurry up. You need to go now. Yes, you know, salvation is too important for you to drag your feet on it. You need to go on and do it now. Get into where God wants you to be. It's not something you need to, to uh, put off 
for later. It is something that needs to be done right now. For my brothers and sisters, the whole lot of things we could have been passed by now if we had have, have allowed the Lord to have his way in our lives. whole lot of stuff could have been long behind us if we had only allowed God to have his way in our lives. And so I hear him saying you need to hurry up and get there. Yes, before you miss it. And there might be somebody here this morning, uh, you're on the verge of missing your blessing. I come to tell you this morning, you need to hurry up and come on. Hurry up and come on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, God has unusual ways of getting people to where he wants them to be. He used a burning bush to help Moses get to where he wanted him to be. And uh, he used the oil that wouldn't flow on Jesse's other sons so that he could help David to get out the field and come on in and be anointed. He used a storm and a whale to help Jonah get to where he needed to be. Am I right? He used grief and good news to help Naomi get out of Moab and come on back to Bethlehem, Judah. Yeah, and you know, he used some people in our lives to help us to get to where we are right now. Yes, he used somebody, yes, yes, who refused to go to the back of the bus anymore. Yes, so you and I could ride on the front seat. Am I right about it? He used others so that we could live in any neighborhood our money could buy. Am I right about it? He used somebody so we could drink from any water fountain that we want to drink from. Thank God, all right. I thank God for those who have paved the way so you and I could have the privileges that we have right now. Thank God, all right. Anybody here ever stop long enough to thank God for the people who sacrificed? Yes, people who went through some things to make things better for you and I. Thank God, all right. But more than anything, there was somebody, yes, who went through everything so that that you could have peace with God. Ain't God all right? I thank God today for a man named Jesus. Ain't God all right? Anybody here know, had it not been for Jesus, we couldn't have peace with God. Ain't God all right? Had it not been for Jesus we couldn't be saved yes had it not been for Jesus yes we couldn't have a heavenly inheritance oh Lord I thank God today for Jesus Christ he did for us what nobody else could do one Friday evening on a hill called Calvary he he died, didn't he die? Put him down in a bar or two. But early third day morning, he rose again. Yeah, anybody here today, thank God for bringing you to where you are. Thank God, all right. When I look back over my life and see what he's done for me, oh, I give him praise for all he's done. Yeah, oh yeah, we made it by 
the grace of God anybody here know had it not been for the grace of God you wouldn't be here right now yeah his grace brought me saved. Yeah. Yeah. I know something about God's grace. It's grace that kept me when I couldn't be kept. Thank God, all right. It was grace that blessed me with blessings I don't deserve. It's grace that's kept me alive when I was supposed to be dead. Thank God, all right. Ah! God's grace. Thank God for his grace. Ah! 